Carol of the Bells is an awesome tune, and here's how you play it. I've got a D curd, and if you've got a different curd, this will work perfectly. Just use the overhead angle. If you've got a slightly different instrument, you might need to use my notation system. As long as your pan is in minor, these notes will work for you. So whichever way you're learning, join in, have some fun, and don't forget to tag me in your responses. This is just my arrangement of the tune. There's loads of different ones, but I've tried to take some of the most important little melodies and motifs and stick them in. The first one is this very, very well-known bit. It's iconic. Immediately, you'll notice that we're in three. So when we're counting, we're really used to counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But this one, this isn't in that time, it's in three. One, two, three. You might call it 12 eight, you might call it three, four. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. But for now, all we need to know is we're in three. So as we go, we have these notes. We're using the third degree of your minor scale, second, and landing on the first. So for me, with my D curd, that's F, E, and D. So starting up here, we're counting three beats. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. The very simple version is... We're just putting that little turn around. One, two, three, one, two, three. It's really easy to slip into four sometimes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but that's not what we want. We want to keep that rolling, kind of like a waltz sound. So let's try it a little faster. One, two, three. Now the great thing about this tune for handpan is it has lots of different ideas which layer on top of each other. And that means that we basically get to pick and choose because we've only got two hands. So the next section, once you've got that, goes up. We're starting on the fifth degree of our minor scale. So five, four, three. In this case, that's A, G, and F. But we do the exact same pattern, our hands can remember it. So should we try them together? First the lower one and then jumping up to the higher one. Four of each. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Little bit faster, one, two, three, off we go, one, two, three, four, jump. You can use whichever fingers you like, I like to jump between these ones, but this, I'm using a finger and thumb shape down here, but here I'm using two fingers, whether you use these two or those two, it's up to you. Obviously, if any of this is too fast or too slow, speed it up and down in YouTube. Now, that might definitely be enough for you. That's loads of things to think about. There are lots of different options. You can do one than the other, but you also might want to try doing the two together, so a kind of harmony stacking version. For that, we do need to get pretty cute with our hand positions, and there's loads of options, but we're looking at playing these together. taken this one and we've added on top. So firstly try it out with two hands and just get used to that shape. Now I bring my hand down from here to here, you might have a different way. Also works, but the way I do it. Because then I don't have to take my left hand as far as possible, and my left hand, being my non-dominant hand, is a little bit lazy. So we'll try that together, we'll do the lower one, the higher one, and then the two together. And if that one's too tricky, just stick on one of them the whole way through, that's totally fine. Off we go, one, two, three, up. Both together. Even that is pretty tricky, uh, so feel free to stick there. But if you want to challenge yourself further, the way I like to try and do it, or I'm experimenting with doing it, 
is with one hand. It's honestly one of the hardest hand positions on handpan. Some people do it like this. And some people do it by reaching around. It does depend on your pan and your hands. Uh, but this means that we're free to play each of these groups with two hands. So that one is the hardest one. And then we're moving down to here. I like to reach with my right hand uh, because that way my left hand can just stick here and not worry about shifting position. So just really slowly, just see how that feels. definitely not the cleanest sound so um, keep working on that and if you've got a better technique for that one let me know the great thing about arranging is it's your choice make it so that you can play it and you can enjoy playing it if you want to play this section 10 times that's perfect that's your arrangement you can build it like that and if you want to add in these other ideas that's totally fine too it's just up to you so do whatever suits you but if you are going for the two-handed version or whatever once you've had enough of that section it's time to bring in this descending bass line it's we're only doing part of it up on the curd, but it's this ding, dong, ding, dong kind of idea, kind of haunting walking down. So we're starting on one, and we're just going seven, six, five, walking down on the scale numbers. D, C, B flat, A. So if you want to, just play the bass line. So it will go like this. So we'll just go straight from the first section to the bass line section. See how that sounds. Go one, two, three. Bass line. One, two, three. Try again, up to the notes. Try the higher harmony. Walk down. And it's so fun, like that's not how the song goes, but just by hearing those parts of it, people are gonna be like, oh, is that Karen of the Bells? Oh, I know that, that's cool. Now let's try putting them together. So we'll just keep that first melody idea with that descending bass line. Starting off over here, both hands together. And that's where that finger and thumb really gets important because it means I don't have to shift my hand, it's just sitting here, nice and slow. One, two, three. Next. Next. faster. Go. Doesn't that sound good? Yes, we're doing it. Um, and again, we can totally experiment. Let's try that with the higher harmony, nice and slow. One, two, three. Try that a little faster. Now, they're the two simpler options, perhaps, and you can interchange them. If you're feeling really cute, the idea might be to play that whole harmony along with that bass line. Now, it's a little tricky, so do your best. One, two, It's a great exercise for practicing your crossing shape. So whatever speed you're doing it at, whichever hand, it's a great exercise. If you want to give it a go up to speed, try it with me now. Off we go. <sighs> so your right hand is really active and your left hand is just hanging out on the offbeat. So you might come up with a more balanced way of sticking it that works better for you. There's loads of options. Might be more easy for you or 
honestly, choose something that works for you. But that's the idea anyway, and you can come up with your own variations on those bits of the tune. The rest of it, I feel like it's a bit simpler. I'm going to play for you those other little sections of the tune that I chose to include. Again, you can pick your own ones. One seems to hear words of good cheer from everywhere filling the air. That bit. So we have this bit of tune. Da, 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 da. But with our voices, we do go da, 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 like down low. Obviously, we don't have those notes on the pan. And that's where the numbering system is super useful. We need five. We need an A available to us on our D. But it doesn't really matter to our ear which one, because these notes, despite sounding different, they're kind of the same. They're both the letter A. So instead of playing this note down here and trying to find more, we just skip up. So we have one seems to hear words of good cheer. You see how it's the same as going do 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 do. Ba, 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 da. Um, one seems to. It's really just walking down in step, apart from that last one, which jumps to the one. So try that section with me. One, two, three, off we go. My biggest secret to covers is always just sing the tune in your head. Sing the words, imagine you're singing it, sing it out loud. That will really help you get the rhythm and the shape right. One seems to hear, off we go. And finally, we get to our have a very, very Merry Christmas bit. And that's just walking up every single one of the notes on your curd. If you've got a different pan, it'll be a bit more tricky. But on our curd, it's just... Just walking up, so... A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A. And then we come back down. G, F, or 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4. So should we try both of those tunes together? One, two, three, off we go. Other bit. And then I chose to go into a little bit of percussion because this is a hand pan and it's nice to play it. So still thinking about that one, two, three sort of groove. So I was using these notes, these notes. Cause I still want to hear this kind of descending thing picking them out with a bit of harmony. That's great. You might add in the ding. Sounds good with all these, it's fine. Or a bit of percussion. works cycling any of those bits together in any order you like so I would love to see what you come up with even this four times and then those chords those two notes again that descending bass line that higher harmony Tune. 
And you can do your own little jigsaw, your own Lego, putting together your own arrangement of Carol of the Bells. I hope you enjoyed that. If that's useful, tag me in your videos of this, however short they are. I love, love, love seeing what you come up with. Do like, comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to see more, you can see a video of me and Amy Naylor playing our arrangement of Carol of the Bells. Or you can stay on my channel to find some other Christmas song tutorials. What fun. Merry Christmas.